Well, we actually just sat down for briefing, and uh, it was actually just prior to briefing because the ship commander hadn't come in quite yet. And uh, I believe it was Officer Landing said, uh, you know, he got this startled look on his face, and he said, you're kidding. And we're like, what? And then everybody turns their radios on, and then you know, it's shots fired, so everybody bails out of the squad room, hops in their squad, and you know, heads towards the scene. Uh, I pulled in to uh, Division and Lincoln area, and Officer Burkholz was pulled in next to me. Uh, we had exited our vehicles, and I had just I had charged my M16. I looked over, saw that he had taken a step forward, so I started taking a couple steps forward with him, and that's when the shots came out, and Officer Burkholz went down. I spun around and dove behind my Tahoe, and the Tahoe took, uh, I think, the Grand total was six or seven rounds, I think, we took to the Tahoe. Okay. And recall I was calling out to him to uh, come on back to our vehicles, crawl back to us because we weren't sure where it was at. I called on the radio, said that we had an officer down, and that uh, does anybody see where the shooter's at? Because we weren't sure where he was at. We, uh, when the armored vehicle came up alongside, I got out and I, I walked along the side of the armored vehicle. Uh, I grabbed Craig's shoulders as we pulled him uh, up into the armored vehicle. And then we backed the armored vehicle out. And then uh, once we got out of direct line of fire, paramedics came out, we put him on the gurney, and then I went into the ambulance with him. Okay. There's no signs of life and you no. got to him? No. I attempted to feel for a, a pulse and didn't, didn't find one. I just kept talking to him. You know, patting him, you know, touching him, making sure he knew if, if he just couldn't hear us or anything, he knew we were still there with him. Okay. After the paramedics told me that he was gone, I exited the ambulance and went back down on the scene. And I set up on a position where um, the county sniper team came up and set up with me. And I was just pulling security with them after they took over security. And then I was just a rear security for them. I did four years active duty, light airborne. Mm -hmm. uh, I did two years Panama, two years on Bragg, and then I got out and joined the National Guard where I was a military police officer. It does it does eat at you a little bit when you're thinking that it's your you know it's your hometown. Um, for me, the hard part is you know Officer Burkholz survives two tours, one in Iraq, one in Afghanistan, and then. The shooter is a medic in the military, and so that's that's hard on me in reference to trying to wrap my brain around the whole process or the whole situation. Could have been he could have picked me out just as easily, but he picked Craig out. So, and at times there's some you feel a little bit guilty in reference to that. Being in the military, we sort of you know veterans, we sort of beat ourselves up over that kind of stuff. Uh, did I miss something? Could I have seen something that? I didn't see, or you know, if I was in a different position, you know, you run all through all those scenarios in your head. You know, frustration, not having, honestly, um, not having a clear shot back, not knowing if there was anybody else up in the room with them that, you know, is a, you know, innocent civilian up there, and uh, not not having the ability to get to Craig before we did when they were always talking about his smile at the funeral and uh, that that was very very apropos is definitely had a very addictive smile it was really a nice smile he was always sitting there with his grin so he seemed like a very positive guy you know never never heard a complain about anything